Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this drill, I'll be teaching you how to make a tie-dyed checkered cake. I used a 7-inch cake tin here, spraying it with some regular canola oil spray, and then dumping in some all-purpose flour. Make sure that's all coated, and this will stop our cake from sticking to the cake tin. And I've used two 7-inch tins for this. Some cake batter divided into four plates, and adding in a couple of drops of gel food color into each one. I'll have the colors listed below. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I just used a Bakehouse pre-mix, two kilos worth of the white chocolate mud mix. Spooning one tablespoon of the two colors into one cake tin. Here I've gone in with the yellow and the electric purple, or the violet, sorry. Just until it's all tie-dyed. And then in the second tin, I've gone in with the turquoise and the electric purple. Now you can see here, every time you put in a spoonful, it all spreads out really nicely. Once it's three quarters of the way full, I'll put on some aluminium foil and make sure it's nice and tight around the rim. This makes sure that our cake rises evenly and cooks through evenly as well. Pop it into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius, mine baked for about an hour and 35 minutes. Once it's completely cool, if you can, leave it in the fridge and cut it the next day, you'll get a lot, a lot less crumbing. Uh, create a guide around the very top of the cake and saw as you rotate the turntable to level off the cake and also to cut it in half. Do that for both cakes and now to create our checkerboard effect what I've done is I've taken a cake tin that is five inches round so two inches smaller than my first um, cake tin and with that serrated knife just marking around and just going around making sure to hit the very bottom of the cake with the um, very top of the knife. Do the same again, again going down two inches, so they're all two inches um, smaller than the other. Turn it upside down and if you see that line just cut around it because sometimes your cake doesn't attach completely when you cut from the top. Make sure that all the layers are coming undone. And then taking a cake board, I've got a 10 inch cake board here, applying some buttercream that I've flavoured with some um, honeycomb flavouring by Roberts. I think it was butterscotch, sorry it was butterscotch. And then going in with the checkered effects. What I've done is I've used one color for the outside rim, a different color for the middle rim, and then again the first color with the very, very um, center rim. Then applying my filling and following those steps again, but this time using the opposite cake. So if you start with the purple, then your next layer has to start with the opposite cake. And you follow that through until you're finished with all your cake layers. Then I'm going to create a crumb coat, which is just a thin layer of buttercream around the whole outside of the cake to trap in any crumbs. Let it sit in the fridge for 10 minutes and then apply a very final layer of frosting. And this is going to be a generous amount, as we're going to be removing a lot of it with our bench scraper. Going around very quickly here, just roughly to make sure that the icing is nice and even, and then going around slowly to smooth it all down and make it all neat. I'll use my spatula to bring in that extra lip of frosting and flatten out the sides of my cake and pop that back into the fridge to set up. In the meantime I've got some black fondant, rolling it out to about 3mm or so in thickness, wrapping it over my cake and securing the very top edge. And then to attach your fondant onto your buttercream cake, spread out those folds and press down. Go around the whole cake just repeating these steps until the fondant reaches the very bottom. Make sure it's nice and attached. Here I'm using my fondant smoother to press the very bottom of the fondant into the cake and then just trimming off the excess, working as close to the cake as possible with my little spatula. Then I'll take two fondant smoothies and just go around the cake, clapping them together and just kind of pressing them together back and forth to create those nice sharp edges on the top of your cake. Smooth at the top and the sides. And in the meantime, I'll create my diamond pattern on the outside. Same fondant, cut, um, rolled out to about 2 millimeters in thickness and cutting out some diamond shapes. I'm going to spray the edges for interest with some Gold Sheen Airbrush Color by Americolor. And I've got the pressure in my air gun on low so my little diamonds don't go flying around. And just lightly coloring the edges. Attach those onto your cake with a little bit of water. Make sure that you are lining them up so the corners are touching the corner from the previous two diamonds. 
And then at the very end, uh, they might not always overlap. So I just kind of went right over it. And it kind of looks fine. That's the back of the cake. Then do your very top pattern as well. Just continuing from the regular pattern. And then taking my little spatula to trim off the excess. And with my thumb, just smoothing it out. Apply your little edible pearls on with some water again. Pop on a cake topper if you like. And you're done. That's how you decorate and assemble a multicolored checkerboard cake. Without further ado, I'm going to cut open this cake because I cannot wait to see what it looks like on the inside. All right, let's begin. The first slice is always the hardest. And I'm just going to go in like this. I'm going to make that checkered pattern the guide for my slice. Let's make sure that that's going to detach. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. I, I kind of like that. This cake kind of reminds me of like an Alice in Wonderland or Alice in Wonderland kind of theme. On the outside and on the inside as well. Okay, can I disconnect that? And that's the inside. Oh, check it. And that's how it's done. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope it was useful for you guys. And if you do give it a try, do let me know. I'd love to see some photos. If you like little cake toppers, I do sell those on my website. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you next time.